These people are reporting for work. Hi, Scotty. Good John. Morning. Good morning. It's a typical day, typical work location. And when it comes to driving, they'll face the same hazards that you and I face when we get behind a wheel. Unless we stay alert to these hazards, any one of us can become involved in a serious accident. As Mr. Smith mentioned, over a third of our motor vehicle accidents happen while we're either backing up or entering or leaving a parking place. Hi, ladies. So I hope this program on proper backing and parking will help prevent some of those accidents. Let's take a look at some of the conditions that can lead to trouble. Good morning. This is the company safety line for Friday, August 24th. Regretfully, we have another bell system fatality to report this morning. The South Central Bell and Solar died last Wednesday from severe head injuries. Trouble can start at the beginning of the day before you even get into your vehicle. How do you feel? Do you have a cold? Did your day start with an argument? Your attitude and your health can affect your ability to concentrate on driving. And there's another thing to consider before you get behind the wheel. Make sure you plan the safest possible route to your work location. Avoid congested areas and eliminate the need for excessive or hazardous maneuvers when you arrive at your destination. Do you think of anything else? How about the condition of the vehicle? A mirror that isn't right? A burned out turn signal, brake light, or backup light. Any one of these can get you into trouble. That's why a daily pre-driver check, as outlined in Appendix 16 of the Bell System Accident Prevention Plan, is required prior to driving any company vehicle. Always verify that your vehicle is in good operating condition at the beginning of each day. As soon as you arrive at your work location, immediately assess the area. Look for conditions that could cause problems. Look for children playing, traffic congestion, parked vehicles, or other objects such as fire hydrants that could become hazards. And remember, unless it's necessary to use the vehicle for work area protection or to use it as a tool, it should always be parked legally. Look for posted parking restrictions and park facing in the same direction as the traffic flow. If at any time, due to the nature of the job, the vehicle must be located on the traveled portion or on the shoulder of the road, work area protection must be used. As a driver of a Bell System motor vehicle, you're expected to practice defensive driving 100% of the time. Let's take a look at another parking decision most of us face every day. You've planned your route so that you arrive on the same side of the street as the work location. Before you slow down and begin looking for a suitable parking place, signal your intention to other drivers in the area. Signaling is of utmost importance since the interruption of traffic flow increases the chance of a rear-end collision. Now slow down and survey the area. Look for the safest available parking spot, one that will allow you to park without backing and one that gives your vehicle the least exposure. Yes, there is parking in the driveway, but that would require backing. Pull through is always the first choice. Here we can pull in and pull out without backing the vehicle. When selecting a parking location, Avoid locations immediately adjacent to or across from intersections or driveways. Choosing the right location can save your vehicle from being sideswiped or backed into while parked. The single most important thing to remember is to avoid locations which require backing. With this in mind, let's look at another parking situation. Here too you've planned your route. You're conscious of your surroundings, vehicles ahead, vehicles behind, children playing, and other vehicles leaving parking places or coming out of driveways. You signal your intention and you quickly look over the area for the safest possible parking spot. You see there's no suitable pull-through parking on the street. However, because you were thinking ahead, you recall passing a pull-through parking space half a block back. 
making right turns, come around the block, park here and walk to the job. In this particular case, it's the only good choice. You shouldn't have backed into the driveway or into a parking space between two other vehicles. Parking here will allow you to pull in and pull out without backing. Here's another situation that requires walking to the job. This is a very busy street. There's no available on-street parking. It would be dangerous to stop in traffic and back into a driveway. Let's continue on. Make a right turn at the next corner and park on the side street. Then walk to the job. Remember, pull through on-street parking is by far the best choice. Let's face it though, there are times when backing is your only choice. But don't forget, when you make the decision to back, you're taking an action that leads to over 30% of our motor vehicle accidents. So be careful. It's important to understand that backing accidents are preventable, but that backing puts you in a very vulnerable position. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jay. Not only is your vision severely limited, but the vehicle reacts differently. Let me show you what I mean. When traveling forward, the rear wheels closely follow the path of the front wheels. However, when turning left or right while backing, the front of the vehicle makes a wide sweep. Since your attention is usually to the rear, this makes it much more difficult to avoid trouble. In this case, we've decided that our only choice will involve backing into this driveway. Always back in and drive out. Why? Because we've just looked at the area. We're aware of any obstacles. And we'll be backing out of traffic, which is far easier and far safer than backing into it. Before backing, sound your horn to alert anyone in the area. Whenever possible, use a guide. If you have another employee riding okay, with you, ahead. ask him or her to get out and guide you. An employee passenger should automatically get out and help without being asked. But you are the driver, and it's your responsibility to operate the vehicle safely. So don't hesitate to tell the passenger that you want help. And when guiding a vehicle, be sure to maintain eye contact with the driver. Okay. Don't stand right. in his blind That's spot. If you always have eye contact, there should be no confusion. Use hand signals as well as voice commands. If a second person is not available, and you're unsure of what is behind you or of your proximity to a hazard, stop. Get out and look. Pick out a prominent object to use as a reference point as you back. Constantly check your progress and position in relation to that object. Back very slowly. It will give you more time to react should you get into trouble and allow you to keep better track of your vehicle's position. Be aware of the hazards of the blind area to your right and whenever possible back to your left. Never open your door or put your head out your window while backing. Either could cause injury to you or damage to the vehicle. Backing from these positions also leaves you completely blind to anything directly behind your vehicle. Use your mirror in addition to looking over your shoulder. When backing is necessary, never back any further than is absolutely essential. In this case, back only until you've cleared the road and the sidewalk. That's all. Walk from here to the house. One of the most common problems in rural areas is long driveways. In many cases, it's best to park along the street or the road and walk in. If on-street parking isn't available, back into the driveway. But remember, back only as far as is needed to get out of the way of vehicle and pedestrian traffic. If you can't see the house from the road or the driveway is so long that walking would be impractical, you may have to drive in. If there is a long driveway, more than likely there's also a turnaround area. If backing is your only choice, do it when you arrive. Don't wait until it's time to leave. If necessary, use a guide or get out and look around. 
Honk your horn, and then back very slowly. Always place your vehicle in a position to drive out when leaving. Turning around when a U-turn cannot be made without backing is a dangerous maneuver. This problem comes up not only in driveways and private roads, but on dead-end streets as well. Now, planning your route effectively can reduce the number of times you find yourself trapped on a dead-end street, but it can happen, and it will happen to all of us. Here again, I can't emphasize enough that defensive driving is a full-time job. It requires your complete attention and good, sound judgment. So, where in the block is the safest place to make a U-turn? Let's take a look. The safest place is usually a turnaround area such as a cul-de-sac. It allows you to change direction without backing. If the street isn't wide enough for this maneuver, backing will be required. You have two choices. You can turn around using the street only, or you can use a driveway. Remember, always back in and drive out and only back as far as necessary to execute the turn. Again, when backing, get out and look around if you're unsure of the area. If available, use a guide. Remember to honk your horn before you begin to back. And don't forget, back slowly. Your surroundings will dictate where is the best place to turn around. Be especially cautious of children. They will not be alert to vehicles traveling on their street and will probably think of it as their own private playground. Also, the activity of other vehicles, the locations of parked cars, the presence of pedestrians will all influence your decision. Here's another situation where using common sense and being tuned into driving defensively could prevent an accident. There's plenty of room, acres and acres of parking. Finally, a situation where we can pull up next to the job. Nothing wrong with this parking position, is there? Let's see what happens. Everyone who parked after we did had the same idea, to get as close to the job as possible. Now, we're boxed in. Not only do we have to back up to get out, but we're backing in a very confined area. We should remember that not everyone practices defensive driving, and fewer ever think about parking safely. Well, how could we have avoided that problem? We had plenty of choices. How about this spot? True, it's not the most convenient, but there's less chance of other people parking around us, and that reduces our chance of being involved in an accident. Avoid congested areas. A key point in choosing a parking place is to stay away from the action. The heaviest concentration of hazards exists in parking lots. And it seems the smaller the lot, the bigger the hazard. Fast food restaurants, convenience marts should always be avoided. In fact, stay out of all parking lots whenever possible. Use on-street, full-through parking, even when it requires walking to the job. If a parking lot is your only choice, consider the following. Park in the least congested area, usually near the outer edge of the lot. Your first choice should be pull-through parking, if available. Also, stay out of end stalls. They put you in a position where you could be easily sideswiped. Obey all posted rules and traffic control markings. And avoid diagonal parking when you can. Look for the locations of fire hydrants, lamp posts, or any other obstacles that could get in your way. Remember, back only as a last resort. If backing is required, avoid backing on your blind side, sound your horn, and back slowly. And be sure to use a guide when one is available. A common problem when backing into a parallel position in a parking lot occurs when the driver following you doesn't realize you're going to back and pulls up right behind you. Make sure you've communicated your intention to other drivers before starting to back. 
In most cases, this simple maneuver will take care of the problem. Turning your vehicle across the lane of traffic also puts you in a much better position for backing. So far, we've talked about checking the condition of your vehicle, about planning the safest route to your next work location, and about deciding where and how to park. Once you've found a good parking place, there are several things which must be done before you leave the vehicle. To prevent it from rolling on an uphill grade, turn your wheels away from the curb. When heading downhill, turn your wheels into the curb. When there is no curb, turn your wheels away from the road so that if the vehicle were to accidentally move, it wouldn't roll into traffic. Next, set the emergency brake. Then put the transmission into park. Uh, that's for an automatic. In the case of a standard transmission, put it in reverse. Then turn off the ignition and always make sure you remove the key. Oh, by the way, don't forget to turn off the lights. However, if your location presents a hazard of any kind, do use your four-way flashers. Make sure there's nothing in your way before you open the door. Look to the front and to the rear of your vehicle for passing traffic and for pedestrians. Next, Chalk blocks must be placed whenever you're parked on a grade. They must also be set any time the vehicle is to be used as a tool, such as for an aerial man lift, and use them whenever required locally. Also place cones when they're required. And whenever your work will take you out of sight of the vehicle, make sure that all doors and compartments are securely locked. Let's be certain we don't leave a trap for a curious child. Safely leaving the parking place is your next defensive driving responsibility. Look over the area. Have conditions changed since you parked? If you selected a good location, you'll be able to exit without difficulty. Before entering the vehicle, two things must be done. First, plan your route to the next location. And second, make a complete circle check of the vehicle. If there's any reason to believe that children might be playing in the area, look under the vehicle, too. Immediately following the circle check, get in and drive off. The longer you wait, the greater the chance of conditions changing around you. If it's necessary to delay your departure, Get out and make your circle check again, just before you leave. Well, that just about does it. I've covered most of the common backing and parking situations that you might encounter, and given you some guidelines to follow. Follow them, and they should keep you out of trouble. However, unless you apply these guidelines every time you get behind the wheel, the odds are you'll have an accident. An accident that could result in damage to a vehicle or other property. Of course, you may not always be so lucky. Remember, it's up to you. Pacific Northwest Bell. This program has been a production of the Audio Visual Center.